So I'm a Nicole Berkew, my candidate for select board. And I thought hosting a little Zoom meet and greet would be a good way for people who haven't voted and who don't know me to log in and get to know me or see what I'm about. Um, I grew up in Hadley. Um, I have a video posted on the Hadley Media website about a minute long that kind of describes what my goals are, how I would like to see the town react to COVID-19 and the loss of revenue. Um, I'm a local business owner. I have a law office on Route 9 with my husband. So I understand the hardships that local businesses are facing as we're not as busy as we used to be. And we really have to adjust how we're meeting clients to make everyone feel safe. And I think that's a big, a big issue with businesses in town. If people don't feel safe that the restaurants are taking the necessary precautions, they probably won't go to those businesses. And that makes sense, right? Because you can die from COVID-19. So I think finding creative ways and reaching out to local businesses to say, hey, maybe you could try this or that or some, some creative ideas to help them get back on their feet and adjust to this kind of different time. Um, so I grew up in Hadley. Um, I went to preschool in the basement of the library. And then I went to Hooker School that was demolished. And then I went to the new elementary school and I graduated Hopkins Academy. Um, let's see. I think some of my biggest assets and the, one of the biggest things that will help me be successful on the board is that um, I'm an attorney and the skills that you use as an attorney will translate well to being on the board. Um, I feel like I've said that so many times, but I think it's true. I have a strong moral code. I'm ethical and I can analyze information having any prejudices. I guess I can objectively analyze information to figure out what the best solution is. Um, let's see. I think I'm a good judge of character and I can assess people and determine what skills would be helpful for certain positions. For example, the town administrator, that's a big job. And during this time, do we want the town administrator to take on some of the tasks that you would see a town planner take on. Um, so if the town were to hire a town planner, what would we want to see the town planner do? We would want him to maybe, or her, to be business savvy, to find ways to help the, the town expand their revenue and help these businesses new and existing, find creative ways to help them succeed. Um, seems like during this time, the responsibilities of the town planner are pretty specific. Um, maybe trying to formulate some type of zoning chain for affordable housing or, you know, all along Route 9, though. I would like to see all the development kind of stay along Route 9, um, like cluster development, like senior housing, affordable housing. Um, I know there's always the issue of college students, but I think if there's a requirement that whoever is the developer create restrictive covenants that prohibit certain actions, it'll maintain the appearance of that development and they're enforceable, right? Um, well, I think, so our revenues are gonna go down a lot um, and we're really gonna have to think about ways to broaden our revenues and make cuts or kind of not spend money that we don't need to spend is a better way to say it maybe. Uh, so I'd really like to use my skills as a business owner to help other local businesses find ways to make money. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I would be a beneficial person to hire a new town administrator. That is a big job and Hadley can be a tough place to feel welcomed in. So if that person isn't a Hadley person, um, I think it's important that they are confident, that they're personable, um, that they appeal to the people in the town and aren't standoffish or abrasive. Um, they have good kind of customer relation skills, um, good at multitasking, and are open to hearing what's important to the residents. 
think those are like fundamentally what would be important in a town administrator. Also, of course, having a good understanding of finances and how our town works and what's important to our town. Hmm. Uh, I guess another one of my goals on the select board that seems like an easy thing to accomplish right off the bat is improved communication with residents. I have a Facebook page, I have a web page. I post on them all the time. I would like to continue doing that. I would also, I feel like I've said this so many times too, but I would also really like to draft kind of a one page, brief summary outline of what happened at the select board meetings and post it to the town webpage right on the front page so that people can see what happened. And if it's something that sparks their interest, they can go look at the video. Um, otherwise, we're kind of, the only other option is to look at the agenda or the minutes or the video. So if people want a quick way to see what's going on in town and what decisions were made and what happened at the meetings, then they could kind of go to this one page outline of what happened. And if they want more information then they can go look at the video, um, right? Because it's the young people that will be taking over. We want young people that care. I think sharing information is a good way to get people interested in what's going on. Does anyone have a question? <laughs> I have a video on the Hadley Media website, um, one minute video kind of expressing my goals as a select board member. And I'm also always available by phone or email, or you can pop into my office on Route 9 to talk with me. Um, I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, so, yeah. Also, um, growing up in a local business in Hadley and now having one of my own, um, that gives me a good position to deal with finances. Um, I'm fiscally conservative and I don't think raising taxes is the best way to increase the town's revenue. Plus, you know, during this time, I don't want to see residents having to pay more money, um, especially people who have been laid off or lost jobs. Um, more support from the town on how they can succeed and make more money is what I would like to see happen. Um, what made me want to run for select board? Well, um, one of the select board members um, became friends of ours and just listening to him talk about what's going on, um, I became really interested in having an impact on how Hadley is run. And I immediately knew that I would be a representative that people would be pleased with. I'm professional, I'm smart, I'm articulate. Um, I think I would be a great asset to the board. I can work well with other people um, and I can analyze issues and try to make the best decisions. And when I heard him talk about all these issues that are going on, I really wanted to share what I thought was the best solution. Um, and especially now with COVID-19, I'm super interested in being a part of the board because I really want to help these local businesses succeed. I mean, how awful would it be to go out of business? I mean, look at Alina's they've completely changed their format, only takeout. Um, you know, how are they going to adjust their business so that people go? I mean, I think a lot of people miss going to these local businesses and are supporting them now through takeout, but I want these businesses to know that we are supporting them and that the town will help them find ways to succeed. Um, uh, for example, Eslon, they have an outdoor seating area maybe trying to work with these local restaurants to create outdoor seating. That could be something that's beneficial. So yeah, I think that's why I wanted to run for a select board. I'm invested in the community. I 
left in 2006 and came back in 2015. I did not think I would be coming back to Hadley, but it's really the best place to live when you have a family um, and really the best place to live, period. It's a great community surrounded by colleges and um, you know, the Northeast in general is a great place to live, especially Hadley. It's safe. Um, there's so many advantages of living here and I would like that reputation to continue. So if anyone has any questions, they can send them to me via chat or you can just ask me a question. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, the state has a program. You can call the number 211 and ask any question you have about coronavirus. Um, that could be helpful because there's lots of mixed information out there, uh, especially if you use Google. I mean, sometimes there's inconsistent facts. And so that's a great way to kind of talk with someone live from the state. You just dial 211 and ask them questions. Um, Um, so I have another question. Are there any specific issues you see with regard to the schools? Um, when I was going to school here, uh, the Hadley schools had a really, really good reputation. I graduated with about 34, 35 kids, all of whom I had gone to preschool with. We all knew each other and now having children in the school system, I really like the fact that everyone knows everyone because it really kind of protects your kid and you kind of always know what's going on. They don't get lost in a big crowd. Um, I think the school is phenomenal and the elementary school teachers are great. My son's had an excellent experience. Um, my daughter Ava's only almost one. She'll be going to the school system as well. Um, Hopkins was always great. I think anyone would probably agree with me that it's dated. Um, now is not the time to be spending money on renovating Hopkins, but maybe like in way down the pipeline, it would be nice to kind of revamp the high school to make it a more attractive place for students to be. The quality of, of education is really high though. It was really high when I was there and it continues to be high. And based on the school choice numbers, we have more kids coming into our school than leaving. So that really is a testament to how great of a place Hadley is to be. Uh, so I have another question. If elected, how will you stay in touch to communicate with the community? Um, I have my web page that I will use to communicate. I have my Facebook page that I can post kind of important tidbits about what's going on here and there. Um, and I also am really committed to drafting this one page kind of outline of what happened at board meetings and posting it to the main page of the Hadley website in PDF form so that people can just go and read it whenever they want. Um, I'm also with an office right on Route 9. People can really pop in whenever they want. Um, my phone number and email are on my Facebook page, and I would encourage people who want to speak with me to call me. I think the more people you talk to, the more perspectives you get on a certain issue, and that's how you can come to the best opinion the best decision by really gathering as much information as you can. Um, I think if I was part of the board, I would be easy to work with. Um, I don't think that there's anything I've said or done that would give anyone concern that I would be a difficult person to deal with or that I would have strong opinions or an agenda. I decided to run for the select board because I really like Hadley and I know that I can have a really strong impact uh, and a positive impact on the town. Um, I know that I can listen to what people want and represent them effectively. 
And I think people in general would be really happy with me as their representative. Um, yes, I'm gonna, so my next question is, are you willing to hear people out who disagree with you? Um, yes, so that's like, you know, kind of what happens to me all the time. People are always disagreeing with me and finding very clever ways to tell me about what I think is wrong. And, uh, you know, it's really all about how much information you can gather, how much information you can analyze, how much time you can spend uh, kind of thinking about an issue and viewing the facts. And once you do that, you can be confident in your position and whether someone disagrees with you or not is fine. Because as long as you're confident in your decision and you've done the homework and you've done what needs to be done to make kind of an appropriate conclusion about what should be done, then that's what should be done, right? And plus, I think if everyone had the same opinion and never disagreed with you, that would be really not beneficial for anything. You want people to disagree with you and question you so that you can come to the best outcome. Uh, so the next question is, what are your ideas for some of the old buildings in town not being used? Um, when I look at some of the old buildings, in particular the Russell School, I kind of see um, lost potential. Um, the town could, I mean, uh, not right now, because I don't think we should be spending money on it right now. But, uh, you know, there's certain options that could be considered. Could the town renovate it and then rent it out? I mean, that's such a prime location uh, that could be extra revenue. Should the town maybe, is it, if it, is it cost prohibitive to renovate it? Should we list it for sale under the condition that it has to stay the way it is now? Um, I think it was sad for everyone to see the Hooker School be demolished right in the center of town, that beautiful brick building. And I would not want to see that happen at all. So something should be done soon, to be honest, because if it's just kind of sitting there, you know, buildings just to be sitting there and not being used, it's, it doesn't help with their longevity. Um, so it's a beautiful building. I mean, it would be great if it could be offices or something for the town to rent to someone else to make money off of. especially now with the new library and the new senior center um, right in the center of town. They're beautiful buildings. And I think the buildings kind of that are in the center of our town and really if a newcomer is coming into town, those are the buildings they see first. We wanna have a good first impression and a good representation of how the people of Hadley value their, the character of the town through these historic old buildings. And I think renovating older buildings can be very, very expensive. Um, so we just have to kind of analyze our options and figure out what's best. Um, personally, I would like to see the town continue to own the Russell School, but I would also like to see the town make money off the school. Um, it's too beautiful of a building to just be sitting there. I think they recently replaced the roof and it cost under $30,000. Um, but I do know that town employees spend some time there fixing it and from my understanding of the people who go fix it, um, it's in a pretty bad condition. When I was in high school, that school was used by the Pioneer Valley Charter School, but they moved. Um, my next question is, are there areas where you see the town could save money? Um, 
yeah, I think that's, you know, the first meeting after the new select board member is elected is kind of discussing where the town is going to be saving money, what things don't need to be spent, where we can save money, where we can put off spending. Um, those are all really like bu budget specific issues. Um, and it'll be kind of, you know, maybe considering holding off on a capital purchase until the town has more money. I mean, do we really need the truck now? Like a cap, you know, for example, or can we hold off? Um, I think there's a lot of ways to save money and those options will all need to be explored. Um, for example, should we hire a town planner and a town administrator? Um, how vital is the town planner? What is the town planner gonna add to the town that makes it worthwhile to hire them, give them benefits, all this? Um, so those things really need to be considered. Um, I would like to see our revenue increase mm -hmm. through zoning changes. Um, the town needs more affordable housing, more senior housing um, along Route 9. Having a so cluster development, which means that you can build more homes on, a, uh, on the land than what's allowed. Um, have restrictive covenants. So you have to have a developer that cares, right? Cares about the, um, the subdivision, the housing that they're developing and doesn't wanna see it be occupied by college students who, I don't know, probably wouldn't add to the appeal of a community, affordable housing or senior housing. I mean, senior housing wouldn't be an issue, but affordable housing. Um, for example, you could have restrictive covenants that say, you can't have beer cans all over the lawn, or you can't uh, have a hundred people in your front yard blasting music, um, or you can't leave your trash bins out on the driveway. I mean, things like that would preserve the appeal of an affordable housing subdivision, and it can be done. It definitely can be done. Um, and if college students want to live there, that aren't just going to be trying to find a cheap place to live and not really care about how it looks like and not care about how important affordable housing is to the town, then you know, it has to be really considered and controlled through these restrictive covenants, which for people who don't know, restrictive covenants are basically rules on how you can use your land. And if you buy a piece of property and those rules are a public record, so if they're recorded with the registry, then you have to obey them. It's like HOA rules, kind of, that's a good way to put it. So everyone would be subject to these HOA rules and they would have to follow them. Um, they're enforceable. You can enforce them in the court. So I think that would be a effective way to add affordable housing without the fear that they would be purchased by all these college students and it would just be like one big college subdivision. Um, I think that when the town is considering where to save money, it would be helpful to kind of look at where the larger sums of money could be saved um, and then go from there. You know, that might be the most effective way to do it. And I think that really depends on a lot of communication with department heads, right? Because they know best what they can go with and what they can go without for a few years. So you'd really have to kind of defer to them and work together and figure out what sacrifices can be made. But it seems like people would be on the same page and that page is only moving forward and spending money on things that are absolutely essential and holding off until the town stabilizes their revenue. But at the same time, we'll speed up the process of recovering from COVID-19 if we can expand our tax base. And that would be through the welcoming of new businesses, the supporting of existing businesses. We don't wanna see businesses going out of business. Um, we wanna be a town that welcomes business and helps businesses succeed. Uh, the next question is, do you foresee your education and career being an asset to the select board? 
Um, yeah, I think it's a huge asset I have above the other candidates, to be honest. I'm used to being in a courthouse. I'm used to people disagreeing with me. I'm used to having to plan my speeches and articulate myself. I'm used to analyzing inf information, looking at all sources of information, and having a strong argument. Because in my profession, people are always trying to point out the weaknesses in your position. So when you make decisions that are in the best interest of everyone, you have to analyze as much information as possible and then make a decision. And that involves talking with people who are knowledgeable about the town, uh, reading, um, seeing what other towns are doing, uh, kind of discussing obviously with the other board members and determining what is best for the town. So yeah, I do think that my professional skills translate very well into being a member of the board. Um, I also have a really strong moral compass. Um, I want to see the right thing be done. Um, and I'm not easily subject to pressure. Uh, I don't really care if, um, I guess I shouldn't phrase it like that, but I'm not easily convinced to do something that I don't think is right. I think that's important, right? But also, you know, at the same token, um, you have to work with the other board members. And I want to assure the other board members that I would be an enjoyable person to work with. Um, as long as my intent is consistent with everyone else's intent, which is to make the best decision possible based on all the information that you can analyze and all the information that's presented to you. Um, I also think it's important to consider the fact that I'm really invested in Hadley uh, with my local business. I have young children. They're going to be in the school system for a long time. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm not going to be unavailable um, really ever because I'm always here working and I'm always here with my children. So that's a benefit of being young is that you are invested in the community for a lot of years. Um, you know, my husband and I will be here when our children graduate from high school um, because our local business and well, because we dislike Hadley anyways, but you know, I'm going to be here for a long time. I'm in the process of really establishing, establishing myself in Hadley. So the next question is, do you think the Asparagus Festival and other public celebrations are good for the town? Um, you know, I think it's really important for the town to have information readily available to people about ways to stay safe from coronavirus. I think that when the town, when the state opens up, there'll probably be a surge of coronavirus cases. Um, I have members in my family that are high risk, so I've been extremely careful. I don't go anywhere. Um, I wear a mask. I wear gloves. I have disinfecting gel. Um, I think if you're responsible and you take those types of steps to keep protect yourself, then um, you're safe. I think it's really unfortunate that these big events can happen. Like look at graduation at UMass, look at the Hopkins Academy graduation. All these things have to be held off because the impact it could have on the spread of coronavirus and the state's numbers of coronavirus are still going up is too risky. And we don't wanna see people dying or being sick or children suffering. Um, it's a huge sacrifice, but there's really no other way to move forward from this. It just big festivals, big gatherings simply really can't happen unless people are wearing masks and they're staying far away from other people. Um, you know, outdoor festivals, you would think, you know, maybe that would be a great option, but what if it's packed and what if people aren't wearing masks? I mean, the asparagus festival is fantastic. I remember going, but 
I don't know. You know, I think that would have to be something that you would need to consider other people's um, opinions on the board and figure out what's best. Maybe rules can be implemented. Maybe um, the amount of people in the festival can be limited. Um, but the festival always has children in it and children don't understand social distance. So, well, young children. So that could be problematic, but you know, I don't, I have forgot when the asparagus festival is. Um, it's coming up. I remember I've been to it every year. So that might be a bit too soon, a bit too risky. Um, the state's members are not stable enough to be that adventurous yet. But I would like to see some type of outdoor dining options be included in these local restaurants. Um, it's pretty essential that the people who the consumers feel safe in local businesses. For example, in my business, um, we've impl implemented a whole new strategy of meeting with clients. We have air filtration. We wear masks. Um, there's a certain distance. And I know like, you know, other people in my profession are doing similar things. Um, and that's kind of what we have to figure out with restaurants. Can there be outdoor dining where you're far apart? Um, can there be air filtration systems? Uh, put in the restaurants? Are there some type of grants to help restaurants um, install air filtration systems or lighting systems that cut down on bacteria? Because um, restaurants are tricky. How You can't eat with a mask. So it'll be interesting to see how we move forward. I appreciate everyone's questions. So feel free to ask me any more. Um, I had this plan to go for 45 minutes and it's almost 6.45, but I'd be happy to stay till seven if there are any other questions someone would like to ask me. Um, other than that, I guess we can uh, be done unless someone wants to ask something specific. Um, this will be on the Hadley Media YouTube page along with my other videos. So. I encourage anyone who hasn't voted to vote tomorrow. Uh, if you need to talk to me some more, you can reach me. My phone number is 413-540-6759. And my email is nberkum at 413wildgroup.com. Um, that contact information is on my website, nicoleberkum.com, and my Facebook page. So I'd be happy to chat. Um, I really do think that I am a capable candidate for the select board. Um, I think I would really make the town people proud to uh, be represented by me. Um, and I certainly wouldn't want it any other way. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone being a part of this Zoom meet and greet.